So how do we actually configure this in our Ops Manager environment? So first of all, it's going to be enabled on a management server. So pick one of your management servers. If you're going to be dedicating a management server, you should uh, set it up as a management server first, but not point any agents to be connecting to that management server. Now what you do is you go in and you run this client monitoring configuration wizard, which you'll actually find uh, on the management server itself. You right click and choose configure client monitoring. This is not the same as uh, installing other components we've looked at where you actually have to insert DVD and get it set up. This is simply a configuration element. So what we do is we go in, once we've done that, it's going to walk us through these various different steps. So for instance, the client experience improvement program. Do we want to centrally collect that data? Yes or no. If we say yes, we need to specify what port we're using for the, for the um, uh, client connections, and we need to specify whether it's SSL protected, so when they upload their data, it goes to the right place. Now remember, we still need to configure the forwarders themselves, which we do through group policy. We don't do that through Ops Manager because the actual uh, client machines, all of those desktops and laptops, they're not agents. They don't have the ability to communicate directly with a management server. But they are Active Directory uh, uh, members, right? So that means that they're, when they log in, those systems log in, they're going to get the group policy settings and therefore start uploading their information. Now, based on the changes we make in here, we need to specify a port number, which means we need to tell the client machines what port we're using. It may be the default that it gives us, but whatever we choose, the client machines need to know about it. So that would be an example of one of the settings that the, um, uh, the group policy is going to give to the client machine so they know where to go. So it's the name of the management server, the port number, whether to use SSL or not, and whether to even gather up the uh, CEIP information. Now similarly would be error collection. Do we want to capture the collected error information? And one of the things we have to do is specify a, sh a file share path to, to collect error reports. So those error reports are actually files. It's information that when the Windows error reporting mechanism kicks in, generates the error log, it's actually a file. So we've got to put it somewhere. So on our management server will be a file share, whatever we designate here, and that's going to be the upload point. Again, are we using SSL? Are we, uh, how are we going to authenticate? Okay. Now lastly is an option down here, which is the organization name. Uh, so we can actually change it. Currently it's Microsoft. But when they get a message that says, do you want to upload this information to Microsoft, we can change that so they get a message that says, do we want to upload this information to your company? Right? So you personalize it a little bit. Now, when you get to the end of that wizard, and there's a few other options that we'll look at in a moment, uh, you're going to have the opportunity to save an ADM file. An ADM file is an administrative template. These administrative templates are used uh, by group policy to define the settings. Um, so if you've ever worked with group policy, you know that there are administrative templates in there already. For instance, you want to disable control panel. There's a template in there so you can go in and choose enable or disable, right? Or any other of the thousands of other policies. They're all stored and defined within these XML-based uh, administrative templates. Uh, at least the newer ones are XML. Some of the older ones are, are in a uh, uh, a binary or a text format. So we are going to produce a new ADM file. So we're not using existing settings in group policy. This wizard produces an ADM file that actually has a lot of these things pre-configured based on the options we just set up in the wizard. So the ADM file that gets created or generated we can save uh, at the end of this wizard and then we're going to import that into our Active Directory into our group policy mechanism and then we choose where are we deploying that. So we might deploy that particular setting to um, one OU in our environment that's full of uh, several thousand desktops and laptops. So all of those thousands of desktops and laptops will report to that management server uh, utilizing those port and SSL settings and so on. Then I can run the wizard again with different settings, save it as a different ADM file and deploy that one to a different OU. So that now I'm configuring clients depending on the business unit or the security needs of the company. 
Uh, I can have certain desktops and laptops reporting in a different manner or to different management servers. So we're going to use them in a GPO to configure the clients themselves. Um, the default template name is the fully qualified domain name of the server with the ADM extension. Uh, what that means is that when you save it, it's going to pop up with, the, with that name. Now you can change that. Uh, if you are basing these on business unit, give it a descriptive name so you know what the ADM file applies to. Now ultimately, we're going to have views and we're going to have reports that we can run related to uh, AEM. So you can go in and you'll see right off the bat some default ones labeled agentless exception monitoring. These are the views. We can view their applications, the crashes, error events, uh, error group view, system group view, which is giving a group of all the systems that are crashing. Um, so different views into the data and likewise there will be reports. So we want to look at what some of these look like in just a moment.